Hi, welcome to Real Film Snobs. This is Angela Yeager. And I'm Brian Michael. Our first movie tonight is Certified Copy, a film that will be making its way here locally in Salem, uh, that uh, tells the story of uh, a French woman who meets an Englishman in Tuscany, and uh, they begin or perhaps continue on with a relationship. It's kind of uh, ambiguous that way. This uh, film reminds me a lot of uh, last year at Marion Bod, a film that is either a uh, great uh, classic genius or uh, one that I'm still trying to uh, figure out, like the Rubik's Cube. Eh, really, I lose interest there. Uh, with uh, Certified Copy, it certainly starts out as these two people, pretty much it's just a long conversation, very much so like uh, my dinner with Andre. It's very fascinating. They, they talk about relationships, life, love, and, um, uh, and I really enjoyed the first half of it, but about halfway through, the conversation kind of got kind of got stale for me, and I really lost interest in it. Um, it stars Juliette Binoche, who's just one of the most uh, talented actresses out there today, easily. And um, e even her uh, skills as an actress, for me, mm. couldn't save this movie. I just really mm. it ran out of gas right around the halfway when they, especially when they sit down at the, the restaurant. Cafe, yeah. yeah, that really. Yeah, about the cafe right around there where it starts to feel when like they the, become married. The roles, yeah, all of a sudden the roles are starting to change. I mean, there actors playing mm -hmm. characters who are playing role change I know yeah that didn't work for nope. you huh you know I enjoyed it I can recommend it I can give it a solid three stars I don't think it's a, a you know a masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination um, this is by Iranian filmmaker Abbas Kirstami and I've seen three of his other films uh, The Wind Will Carry Us, Taste of Cherry and uh, Close Up Yes, Very that's nice. right. Yes, Very good. and uh, and all three are sort of similar to this uh, in that they're you know a lot of his films are sort of explain exploring the nature of reality, what is real, what is not. He's a very divisive filmmaker, sort of similar to Michael Haneke, except for his films aren't violent or crazy or anything. Like Michael Haneke sometimes can be, but he, they are in that they you know people tend to love his stuff and be, yeah. get really into it, or they tend to go, oh my gosh, this is the most boring thing I've ever seen. And I can understand why some people would fall in that. This is actually. His mm. most accessible film, I think he's done. He did, all of his Iranian films I've seen are very, very slow, <laughs> and like lots of still camera <laughs> shots. And I mean, the movie he did, "The Wind Will Carry Us." There's literally this shot of this guy trying to get a cell phone reception, driving up and down this mountain, and he does. He drives up this mountain for about five minutes, and the camera follows him as he drives up the mountain every single time. And every five minutes, he has to get oh. in his car to go get the cell phone call. And you literally an episode of Lost, but they, you know they just cut <laughs> you, that during commercials. You literally want to kill yourself while you're watching that movie. It's almost but this one I actually really So that enjoyed. made you want to see more of his movies. <laughs> well, I, there, there's something sort of strangely compelling about him because you, you sit there and watch and you go, okay, what is he going after? You know, you figure, I mean, here's someone that's won all these major national and international awards for his films and he's very revered, you know, in the international film circuit. Mm -hmm. So um, so there's that, but it's also, he has an interesting visual style. I often liked the shots that he chooses. He um, often shoots from cars, from looking out from the front of the window and he did that shot again in this film. But I think he has a way with actors. I think Julia Benoche is an interesting performance by her. It's something oh, a little she different. Could, please, she could well, she's always book. great. Yeah. But the uh, her co-star in the film, who it's a first-time uh, performance, I think yeah. is fantastic and a real find. I mean, a really unusual actor with a little bit of a different style. And I think he and Juliette Binoche have a really good uh, chemistry. You know, I just think that the only two kinds of people would like this movie, and that would be philosophy majors and graduate students. They're the worst. Yes. What we were the name of his uh, three movies? Uh, the Wind Will Carry Us, A Taste of Cherry, and Close Up. Isn't that a Trod Rundgren album? No, no. I think so. Anybody? But okay. although I, no. close up, I can also I can actually recommend. The wind will carry us, even for my standards, was a little little tough going. But even I, I thought standards. certified copy, um, and it's interesting that he's making you know more international films now, getting outside of Iran. I don't know because that's because of censorship issues or what. But um, maybe he just wanted to make a movie with Julia Binoche, and really, who wouldn't? Yeah, you can't fault the guy. So yeah, so yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it. So yeah, ooh la la, I lost my attention right about halfway. Okay, so we'll uh, go on to the next movie, which is, what is the movie? It is A Queen to Play. This is another film that's also been making its way here locally in, in uh, Salem. And this stars uh, uh, Kevin Klein as well as, oh boy, here we go again, uh, Sandrine Bonaire. Uh, Sandrine uh, Bonaire is one of my favorite actresses. And uh, she plays a housekeeper who uh, starts a relation, or I should say a friendship with a professor. Or is he a doctor? A, I don't know, Doctor. they use French. They just sat around and yeah. played chess. Of course, he teaches her how to play chess, and she takes that and learns lessons in life and, and love as well. But it's not like American movies, you know, where there's going to be the big, huge, you know, tournament at the end, and there's going to be, you know, Survivor played during, and lots of Sylvester Stallone movies. Well, yeah, it's not one of those. <laughs> um, 
I really enjoyed this perf uh, this film. I, I'm a big fan of hers. She was in Vagabond, Monsieur Hire. She's worked with Priest, uh, uh, Patrice Leconte a few times, including Intimate, Intimate Strangers. Strangers yeah. She's a fantastic uh, actress. And Kevin Klein, wow, welcome back. Well, and, speaking French. Uh, and speaking French. And speaking like French. It's like American, French speaking famous wrong. American yeah. actor disappears and we're just speaking French. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, um, I enjoy her story. This is, seems like a, a very much like a, you know, a real person. Like I said, it's not overly dramatic, uh, um, dramatic. There's not a big, huge swelling score. It's not these big, huge close-ups and tents. Right. It's just kind of plods along as she um, finds her new role in life as mm -hmm. her child has, has grown up. As she's getting a little bit of an empty nest syndrome possibly here shortly. Her husband and her kind of gotten become more of a friends than lovers and so she just branches out meets someone new gets an interest in chess and I love the way they show how chess starts to consume her when she walks along the checkered uh, tiles right. in the building mm -hmm. then she starts moving things around on the table I found it really fascinating yeah. and she's a it's a great performance it's a wonderful film yeah I really enjoyed it they're solid three and a half stars for me on yeah. this one um, you know one of the things I really liked about it is how the characters in the film they actually change throughout the film they don't stay the same they're not static characters like you mm -hmm. often see in some Hollywood films where everybody you know seems predictable and they act out what you would expect them to do um, for instance her husband, who's sort of a working class guy at the beginning, when she first takes up chess, is really jealous and very possessive and yes. sort of controlling. But eventually he comes around and actually starts to support her in really unexpected ways. Um, yes. And her daughter, who at the beginning is ashamed that her parents are poor and sort of dis di you know dismisses her parents, doesn't want her friends to come over because she doesn't want to see the way her any of her friends yeah. to see the way she lives, becomes her mother's biggest champion and sort of a, you know, sort of a, a turn because she sees her mother doing something really great for herself. And I like exactly. the way the characters sort of, you know, they had different layers to them. And even her her relationship with Kevin Klein, which um, has, you know, maybe some romantic edges to it or, you know, definitely some There's some an attraction. I, thought, I found attraction more of attraction there. in terms of respect. He respected yeah. her because here was a man that was, you know, he was a very uh, educated and here was her housekeeper and she took interest in something that's more or less in his realm, his world. The chess is something that's, you mm -hmm. know, kind of a hoity-toity. It's not checkers. Um, and so I, I really enjoyed that. So that he kind of sees that she also wants to learn. And um, he, you know, has someone of a, a great mind. He also had his relationship True. with his wife that he talked about. And to see her wanting to do something like this and to help her along and flourish and grow mm -hmm. was, you know, was something that was very attractive. So in that way, they have an attraction. There's one scene where it was kind of like, uh-oh. What are we doing Yeah, they here? hint that there might be a more of a passion there, but then it doesn't wrap it up. It doesn't become no. a big affair or no. anything, which I really liked. And Jennifer Beals of Flashdance fame has a, a short, small Aww, cameo in the come movie. on. She's been in other stuff than well, that. Well, I know what people will know her from, She's, the L yeah. Word. The L Word and uh, the Devil Wore Blue, uh, uh, Devil in a Blue Dress. She also executive produced this film, so it wasn't like she was just, you know, right. some pretty face. They, they needed some money for the film, and so they... But Jennifer so, Beals yeah, so they called in the woman from Flashdance for money. That's what it was. No, <laughs> I don't think so. I think... But she has a really good part in that she's sort of the mirror image of the Sandrine Bohair's character. Poner's character. Um, she sees her at the beginning yeah. as a as a sexual, exciting, smart, empowered woman who's playing chess, and yeah. that's what gets her started on the idea that she too could play chess. It's well, a way to sex, sort of escape uh, her. Did, uh, yeah, chess it, is a very sexy game. It's trying to make it sexy and, in the movie, and, uh, yeah. Like and not to mention, she, you know, the movie in a way has sort oh, of I a did. feminist message that, of course, that the queen has all the power in chess, which is the, where the name movie. Not, it's not a new movie about you know drag queen shows or something. It's a, yeah. um, it's a queen to play is of course referring to the chess game. So I thought that they was would have. Never gotten that at home. Thank you never, so never much for explaining that. that, Angela. Well, you were actually making a crack about it before the show, if you remember. So, um, but yeah. Sandrine Poitier, it's so nice to see her on the screen again. Yes. I don't know if she's been working constantly yes. in France, and this is the Truly first film we've yeah. seen of hers. Um, but of course, you mentioned uh, the great Agnes Varda film *Vagabond*, which was one of her first big roles yes. when she was very young. She's and fantastic again, nice actress. to see another woman really in her young. mid 40s. You know, which is I guess yes. over the hill by Hollywood standards. But her and Juliette Binoche both look fantastic. Incredible. I don't know what's in the water I looked in to look him up on MDB he's like how old is Julie Binoche she's I know she's picture. older than me and she's yeah she looks amazing and not like plastic surgery amazing like no, no, yeah no no she doesn't have a permanent moves. smile look like the Joker everything's moving she hasn't, uh, <laughs> yeah, she hasn't uh, Some of it's moving very well, because she has a couple <laughs> sexy scenes in yeah. certified copies. So. Yeah. And Sandrine also has some sexy scenes in this movie. And French women in their 40s and 50s, not afraid to get it on, I'll tell you. Yeah. So it's good it's for them. To see. Yes, they there look fantastic. Go. So we'll move on. <laughs> there are, I don't know if that sold the movie or not. French women <laughs> getting it on, on real film snobs. Um, uh, not on, you know what I mean. We'll move on. 
Yeah, Probably a good time to do that. I have no to idea what would uh, Buried Treasures, The List, which you can go to and check out at realfilmsnoms.com. Um, these are the movies that we put up on our website just to torture my parents because they can't see them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the only reason we're our doing this. Our two viewers. Up. Our two viewers. <laughs> But seriously, they, these movies are very <laughs> difficult to find, yes. and these are movies that have been on best of lists for that Brian and I have been following for years, and we just got fed up with it, and we have a secret source to find <laughs> these movies. Yes. So we're just watching them and torturing all of you. If you can find them at a local library, if you happen to live in yeah. a town that still has a good local video store, you might check in Portland, for instance. They have some good yeah. video stores up there. there are, these movies are available some places. They have one good <laughs> they have one good video <laughs> store up there. You might be able to find it on some different rental sites. I yeah. don't know, but that, there, nevertheless, our film mm -hmm. this week is Kings of the Road, 1976 film by Wim Wenders, uh, the great German filmmaker who made a lot of his most well-known movies actually in America. Movie uh, following a traveling projectionist mechanic uh, on the road, and he picks up a stranger uh, along his way who is a recently divorced man who is um, trying to get over his troubles. That's about all I could tell you of the plot of this movie. You made it sound very interesting when <laughs> you just sorry. That, I was like, hey, what movie did you watch? I want to watch that one. I, that, that said, yeah, that was about as much as I could describe of the quote unquote plot of this movie. It doesn't really have a plot. If you don't like plots, then you might like this movie. I don't always need plots in movies. I am a big fan of Robert Altman, for instance. I still had a hard time with this movie. Now, what I will say is, you know, when I started reading up on it online and I read the criterion, there's, you know, essays about this film. It's a very Holy important film. Smokes. Um, and they talked about it being a seminal film in new yes. German cinema. So I felt like maybe if there was a decent transfer of this done, maybe I would have enjoyed it more. It was very hard to watch. There were certain parts of it where I couldn't see exactly what was going on because the VHS transfer we were watching was so blurry. And yeah, so let's blame it on that. Yeah, I really that said, a hard I had a hard time It's two guys. No, you two talked to the whole movie with me. Two. It was like Mystery Science Theater <laughs> at my house because we were so bored by this movie. I mean, haven't the Germans done enough? We gotta watch this. this, this. <laughs> Give me a break. No, you know, and I, I hate to say that nothing happens. I don't even care if nothing happens. It's the fact that we have to watch someone defecate along the side of the road. That's Literally. No, that's something happened. That was, he that's the himself. happening that happened, and I really never, ever, no. So, you have a real issue with that in film. No, that's why you don't like. No. No, that's Angela, why you don't no. you like the uh, movies by John Waters. <laughs> well, no, you do not like defecation it, in films. You have I, real issues yeah, with that. I, yeah, I have real, real issues with that. Yeah, I have a real phobia of defecation. Yeah, that's, that's my problem on this show, the <laughs> movies. I don't like defecation. Yeah, that's... The, no, you know, <laughs> and it just kind of meanders along, and, and that's fine, but at 175 minutes, there's a lot of meandering. You, I think in 175 minutes of film time, you should be able to tell people the meaning of life, or at least, you know, explain Lost, the television show to me. You should, there should be something of value other than a guy goes around and fixes a, uh, you know, projector from here to there. We don't get to watch any of the movies that they're watching, darn it. I mean, there was the, just, yeah, no. I can't and at really one point in time, it. when I had to, when I had to use the little boy's room, Angela was like, I'm not pausing the movie, Brian. I'll tell you what happens. And we figured, well, this is a good time because they're walking into town. We go, and no, oh, that was the end. And it was like, oh, I missed the end of the movie. No, no, you didn't. He literally walked, and that was, that was it. So, I mean, it was just... There's yeah. no, when a film, ha when, a, when rocks stick up out of a stream and they form a, a, <laughs> what people could perceive as a path, that does not necessarily mean there's a path. That just means rocks happen to be there. And those rocks I would like to pick analogy? up and <laughs> smash this movie with because it, it was no. It was, <laughs> there was no, well, you know, no there, good come of it. I this know, reminds me of Stranger Than Paradise, oh, another I like movie that, that, I hate. Stranger Than Paradise, a lot more happened in that one. No. And it has a good transfer, so there's that. But... Uh, you know, there looked like there might have been some really good shots in the film, so maybe from a photography standpoint, maybe it was good. Uh, that's why I'm just trying to give us the benefit of the doubt with that. But that said, they, there's almost no dialogue in the film, nor do you learn anything really about the main characters. No, and for you're just kind of hopping, hey, what's going on? He hops yeah. in the Winnebago and they go. And, and I'm for like, a three-hour-plus <laughs> movie, you hope to learn maybe a little bit something. Just you don't know nothing of this guy. You're just going to let him hop in the Winnebago and drive along, and then you're going to... Yeah. Find out and poop along the side of the road <laughs> and then go to the next town. You're this really obsessed. Sounds, no, it was just one scene of Angela, pooping. No, there was two different. Oh, yeah, there was I the, forgot. The, yes. But they only showed one up close. <laughs> And I, the, I, I, why do I have to defend my? I don't know. I didn't. I didn't give I it a good like review it. either. So we'll move on. It was just a one bad. star. 
It was poop. How did this guy make Paris, Texas? And, this, and Wings, Wings of Desire. Desire. Two of great, two Well, I great think films. that if you turn the camera on long enough, eventually you're going to catch lightning in a bottle. No, he's and he, until the end of the world. That would have a great soundtrack. And he's made some good films. Just this one. I think at the time it was revolutionary, and that revolution is gone. Okay. So we'll move on to our next film, which uh, is again from the list no, and a God. DVD pick. Or it's not a DVD pick, but it's no. a Criterion Collection movie, Melanoche, by <laughs> Gus Van Sant from 1985. This is uh, Gus Van Sant's directorial debut, shot right here in Oregon, in Portland, in fact, in the old Portland. Uh, it's about a liquor store clerk named Walt, and who has an unrequited <laughs> love for a slacker character named Johnny. Uh, you're already laughing. <laughs> I am, because I always think of Nacho Libre, and halfway through this movie, I, I was like, you know, I wish there was a Mexican wrestler that would come in here and attack most of the cast in so this movie. So you didn't movie. like this one? I did not like this movie either, Angela. Here's another one where it's black and white. They put it on some people that really can't act. There's not much of a oh, plot. Oh, I love this go along. I love yeah, this You film. actually own this movie. I own movie. this movie, yes. And uh, in most... A, a majority of critics loved this movie when it came out. And, when it uh, came out. This is back when Prince made great albums and yeah. Michael Jackson was black. A lot has changed since then. And it's yeah, and Criterion good. Collection has put it out in the last yeah. few years. The Criterion and Criterion put out Armageddon. Film, uh, Armageddon. Major film and cinema no. <laughs> professors have written essays yeah. about this movie. Yeah. It's, it's quite a work of art. It's a yeah. really great directorial debut. Um, the photography is fantastic, and I can't believe you can't even get him credit for that. The, it has a beautiful look to it. It has a very daydream-like quality. For as cheap like, as it was, $20, yes, it looks $20,000. I think yeah. I would much rather see this again than Clerks, for instance. I mean, from a visual standpoint, oh, no Gus Van way. Sant is really showing his stuff. You can no see everything way. that came later with My Own Private Idaho and Milk and some of his other great films, Paranoid Park. Um, Gus Van Sant is a fantastic film. Yeah, maker. this isn't a very good one. This no, is a great this is not film. a good Oh, and so is Psycho, right? The remake? That, no, that was a he, bad movie. A he's great made maker, one great bad filmmakers. movie. Lots great of filmmakers make bad movies. And I enjoyed My Private Idaho. I loved Drugstore Cowboy. I've loved a lot of his films that he's yeah. made. This is just not a good one. And it's just You're because wrong. it was his, it was earlier films it was also a gay film and so that was you know it was revolutionary to put some uh, on there but you know what we've come a long way babe and this is just not a, it's just oh, not I don't a think good we have come a long way I think this is actually a really interesting dynamic between the relationship between him and Johnny in terms of the fact that he's sort of trying to always justify his he's objectification forcing himself on another man on Johnny. And that's well, no, like, I, know. I think really. I think the way the the romanticization of his character because he's a little bit better off financially and versus the character of Johnny who's sort of stuck in this situation where he's always being exploited and it's not because he's and gay. if it was it's a woman you would be freaking out hating this movie that's not and, true oh I believe I thought so, it was yes. interesting because he's supposed to because he's an immigrant and they're exploring yes. that situation very early here in eighty five to have him being constantly exploited by all these different people. I thought it was very interesting. Ugh. And I think it's interesting that that character never really, it doesn't be, it's not romantic in the sense that he never f feels anything for the Walt character. And the Walt character is seen as I'm sort of I'm saying it's food. romanticized at all. I'm just saying this is, this is just, no, no, mm -hmm. Angela, this is not. And, and you at home, oh, please watch these movies and write in and tell us what you think. Let's see who our viewers are very intelligent viewers agree with. Yes, Criterion oh. Collection and almost yeah. all the film critics in the world yeah. or Brian. Yeah. So, uh, so see who you agree with. But uh, it, and by the way, for those who are Portland aficionados, it's just got great scenes of downtown Portland, pre yuppified Portlandia, Portland. But you know when Portland yeah, was back gritty. when it was cool and gritty. Yeah, when it, yeah, when it looked, when guys get when people could streets. afford to live there, for regular yeah. working class okay. people. Yeah, because so. that's just it's ruined. It's like Disneyland now. It's all corporate. Yeah, down with the man. Okay, so we're gonna move on to wow. No. Oh, let's let's switch to the viewers pick. Um, uh, we're gonna go to the viewers pick, which is where you, the viewers at home, hop on realfilmstops.com. This is you getting on the internet and uh, submitting a viewers pick. That's where and uh, where you pick a movie that we will review. And this week's is oh, I'm gonna blow her first line. Blow her first Maureen. line. Yeah, Marine. Is it Childers? Childers. See, I want to say something else. Childers uh, submitted. I was a male war bride. And this is what she writes is uh, why you like this movie. Who doesn't love a screwball comedy with Cary Grant? Weird people. Uh, although the story is fairly simple, the acting is brilliant, the, and the banter uh, witty, and Grant is uh, quite funny with his facial expression and body language. Much of the humor surrounds uh, bureaucratic snafus that prevent a WAC from bringing her new husband back to America. I will admit this movie doesn't come close to bringing up Baby or His Girl Friday, but it is fun. Good night, everybody. No, that's... Uh, 
Very good uh, review. Actually, um, it is Howard Hawks, who's one of my all-time favorite directors, who makes fantastic films, even though he's made a few bad ones. This is certainly one of his good movies, and this is a Hawks light film. But you know, anytime you can get a Cary Grant up on the uh, screen, and certainly when they get him in drag, it is pretty funny. I mean, there's yeah, that right there is is, is comedy gold. Um, and certainly the uh, the montage that he keeps doing where he's trying to sleep and he can't figure out exactly where you put the, the what I call the Barney arm. You don't know what to do with the other arm. And, uh, and that's very funny. There is some great dialogue in here and a fantastic chemistry. And uh, you're making funny faces. Did you enjoy the movie, Angela? I hated it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if I hated this movie, you could kick me off. No, I would host. poke you right in the eye. Yes, you could. Um, no, I loved it, actually. And I was surprised. I've actually seen it twice. And I liked it so much that even though I just watched it probably a year ago for the first time, just because I was looking through, you know, going through the old Netflix and saw, hey, you know, I've actually never seen this uh, Howard Hawks Cary Grant movie. I should rent it. And mm -hmm. then, of course, when Maureen submitted it as a viewer's pick, I rewatched it. And just, I laughed my butt off almost as much the second time watching it. I just thought it was hilarious. Yeah. There's just one scene after another. And Sheridan is just great as his com comedic female foible. I loved how yeah. there was sort of this, um, you know, and you remember for the times, but there's this sort of flip on terms of the gender roles at the time. Yeah. I mean, she's a very strong female in the movie, and she's in, you know, in the military, and he's retired from the military, so he's actually sort of following her around with her job, which is kind of cool. But then I love the scene, you know, when they first take off on the road together before they've actually gotten together, and you know it's going to happen eventually, but when they hate each other, supposedly. And yeah. she gets in the motorcycle, and he's That's on the funny. sidecar. And That's then she takes stuff. off. That's, I mean, I yeah. was busting up. I was, I mean, I, I like tears rolling down my eyes type laughing here, folks. I mean, it's a really funny I movie. I always enjoy Cary Grant best when he's baffled, when he has to go to these yeah. different people and they keep telling him the same thing. And he's like, yes, yes, I know. Because you're going to say, you know, and he just tells them, yeah, because I can't do that. Okay, so now where do I go? Go to the next line. Oh, yeah, when they're trying to get the so uh, paperwork to, to get married. Yeah, now, these funny. two had such great chemistry together. It's a real shame that they didn't get to work together. I don't believe they worked together Did they ever, again. they not ever work together? I don't believe that they films? ever had huh, it, which I'm is surprised. too bad. He always has great chemistry, obviously, but, I mean, she really holds her own against mm -hmm. him, and that's that's pretty tough to do, Kerrigan, not that he overpowers. Cary Grant always does well with his female co-stars. He's yeah. uh, one of the few... I think male actors of his time that gave equal, you know, I mean, a lot of the male actors were really great. I mean, Bogart, you can't say anything bad about him, yeah. but he was a heavyweight and he tended to be in, sometimes, with a few exceptions, off really, see Catherine Hepburn and others, but, you know, sometimes the women sort of played second fiddle to him in his films. Yeah. And Cary Grant, you always felt like his female co-stars were right up he there with him. He shared the spotlight. He really wasn't well. afraid to do that. And yeah. I think that, that that's why his comedy works really well, because he's not afraid to work as a team, as a comedic team. And so that's, that's definitely what makes his, a lot of his films work. And as well as um, having Howard Hawks, of course, was just absolutely fantastic. Again, one of my favorite directors and a very talented one. Um, uh, he does a really great job of, you know, just setting things up, keeps the medium shut, stands back and, and lets it happen. Well, he lets the actors do good stuff. But, you know, there is timing to this. And, I mean, I have to say, Cary Grant and, and Sheridan both, they just their timing is so wonderful throughout the film you just don't see I don't know it's just I get frustrated because so many people that I know love to go see these generic romantic comedies that come out these days and so many yeah. of them they don't even have not like I say back in the good old days but they don't even have the they don't even have the basics down on comedy you know they don't even they don't get the shots right they don't have the timing they don't yeah. get good casting with sparks yeah. you know much less a decent script you know the script in this movie is not particularly that involved it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be certified no. copy it exactly. doesn't have to be super comic mind bending you know yeah, yeah. but there's you know, something just a slight different just give it a little tweak put really good actors in who are really good at doing their thing well you know the thing that they have the problem with now is it, it's certainly okay Let's, let's start off with, first of all, Adam Sandler r really wouldn't notice that Jennifer Aniston was attractive in, in, in the movies that recently, he just recently did. I couldn't even tell you the title and I don't really care to know. But, um, you know, that's the part that you always get the sh schmuck who's a schmuck and, <laughs> and a bit schmuck and uh, a schlub. And let's be honest, I mean, Adam Sandler probably is a really nice guy, but, you know, if he wasn't famous, he wouldn't be anywhere near Jennifer Aniston. And so you get these super hot chicks that, you know, they did that with for the longest time on sitcoms, they're these super hot chick with this, this you know, this... Schlubby. Chubby, kind of schlubby guy who's maybe funny, but <laughs> comedy will only get you so far. Or like so Kevin James or something Yeah, like Kevin that, James, yeah. you know, that's a, yeah, it's a really good example. Yeah. He's really funny. Can be, not in his movies. But anyway, and then they have, you know, th so that's the problem there. First of all, you know, mm -hmm. there's it's, it's very obvious that, you know, she would never go out with him. And then secondly, there's always, uh, again, I'll pick on Adam Sandler, crotch shots. There's always the stupid potty humor. That will make my, you know, seven-year-old laugh. But, you know, they, they you know, 
that's pretty easy humor and it's mm -hmm. not really all that funny. Right. There's nothing complex there. Right. And so then, you know, everything can be summed up obviously yeah. in the uh, the trailer and there's just, there isn't anything else. There isn't anything beyond the trailer. And no. this, and the movie and like. There's no substance between the people either. It's just some jerk <laughs> that he has to figure out eventually that this person's attractive. Are you kidding me? It's just a marketing scheme. It's just a marketing scheme. The whole <sighs> movie is like a tagline. And that's what the whole basis is. Whereas I was a male war bride, you have, you know, a fully developed characters. You have, you know, a kind of a cutesy scenario. Yeah. But it seems sort of realistic. And it seems realistic like these two people actually might be together. And he yeah. notices right away she's attractive. He yeah. just sort of doesn't like her because she's sort of a powerful female. And he's, yeah. she just sort of gets his goat, which seems more realistic. You know, he's yeah. not going to be blind. And he's not an idiot. Cary Grant almost never, you know, he sometimes played, you know, he was sometimes silly. He's often sort of baffled and flustered by women, yes. which I think think males can relate with, a lot of men can, um, but he's not an idiot. Yeah. And so you're not thinking, why would she be with this idiot? Which is what I'm always thinking whenever I watch, for instance, an Adam Sandler romantic comedy. Like, why is she even with this guy? So. There's a difference between frustrated and anger and mean. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of times it come across yeah. as mean or and angered. Yeah. Or, you know, it's just, even when you think of, then, then the think about the, a lot of the screwball comedies, like His Girl Friday, you think of the side, you think the stars, you set them aside. The, uh, the character actors are very funny. Mm -hmm. They're given a lot. They're, they're, they're interesting. Right. They would be like, you know, gosh, I'd love to follow, I would like to sit here in this room longer and see what happens with these people. Yeah, so feel, you yeah. never see anything other than that, other than the, oh, gosh, her best friend's gay. Mm, wow, let's see what's, he's going to be very flamboyant and bounce around. That's, that's fantastic. Wow, great. Yeah. Does he have a boy? boyfriend? No, no, no. He's asexual, even though he's, he's gay. So, you know, it's just, it, it gets very yeah. frustrating. So when you see a movie like this, you really appreciate it, and it just, it's really sad that we don't have anything like that today. Okay, wow. Sorry, we're just going to ramble. We're going we're gonna to roll the credits here in a minute. We're still going to keep talking about that. Um, well, it's a, good, it's a good point to bring up. So we both, uh, we, we did a us. split <laughs> on certified copy, but we both could uh, recommend Queen to play. Yes. Um, we, neither one of us can recommend Kings of the Road, though you should find it as a classic. And then uh, we had a big split on Mala Noche, uh, which I still think Nacho Libre would be a much more fun movie to watch. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter as well as uh, watch us on realfilmsnobs.com. We want to thank our sponsors, our fantastic crew, and have a great day and great movies. <laughs>